from afar to up close, from the north side to the east side, no matter the angle or even the time of day. It is a striking landmark, and yet something is missing. I think this entire building is unique. Mm -hmm. uh, it's difficult for me actually to pinpoint something that uh, immediately comes uh, to mind. I'm just admiring this building every day. Is there one element it's missing, do you think? And I think you may be surprised. No. Okay, no, now I'm very curious. Do you have the time? <laughs> yes, I do. What time is it? Uh, well, well, it's 1.38. Wouldn't it have been easier if we could have oh, just looked up? Oh, I see. Yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> Up there, that yes. were, well, I, it would be an ideal place if you wanted to put a clock. Yes. Originally during construction, the west dome of this grand building was designed to have a clock. Every town hall, post offices, churches, schools, even private businesses put clocks out as a service to the community. In fact, part of the rise of unions was that the owners of businesses would often uh, tinker with the clocks and slow them down while people were working and then speed them up when they got past the time so that they were actually getting more hours of work than the clock. That pushes people to get their own clocks. Even with modern technology and machinery, installing a huge clock five stories up is no easy task. But imagine trying to do that more than 130 years ago. This is inside the attic of the west dome of the building where they would have installed it. In this cutout here, which is obviously now being replaced by a rose window. But it is a space that measures over four meters, making it one massive clock. So the question is, how would they have installed it? It's a huge structural challenge. But you're still talking many tons of brass, iron, steel. And of course, for the weights, often lead was used. And often the mechanisms were put in place, or the heavy parts of the mechanism were put in place before the tower itself was completed. So you still had large apertures, you had cranes in place, and you could bring in like the, the bed for the, the mechanism, which is the large iron frame. Benson says a clock for a project like this would have very likely been shipped from the UK, citing existing timepieces in the city, including at Toronto Old City Hall and St. James Cathedral. Although it is hard to confirm with certainty why the clock was never installed, some documents suggest it simply came down to cost, but not only for the clock itself. The cost of the mechanism and the equipment would have been one part, but also the cost of making the building suitable for the clock. If you're going to put a couple of tons of machinery, plus a couple of tons of weight, weights to drive the clock, plus another couple of hundred pounds for the pendulum, you've got to make sure the building can support all that, which makes it much more costly to construct. Today in the digital world, we have the overwhelming ability to carry time around with us wherever we go. But here, for well over a century, Time seemingly stands still, with the window's view of a legendary clock that never came to be. For the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, I'm Anwar Knight.